What is up, my beautiful people? We are back once again to some more malicious compliance. So let's get in the stories, and I'll see you in a bit. Renewed lease with management company, but owner doesn't want any tenants after current lease period is over. Whatever you say. Another post today about landlord shenanigans in college reminded me of this story. I thought the sub might get a kick out of it. I moved into a place in a college town, and it seemed perfect. Low rent, newly refurbished, backyard for my dog, included washer and dryer, etc, etc. The one problem I had was the owner. Even though he hired a property management company to rent and manage the property, he would consistently drop by to look over the property, saying he would renovate this or that part of the house, or just staying and shooting the bowl after I gave him multiple not-so-subtle hints that I wanted him to leave. His son had previously lived in the unit, so it seemed he was used to being able to come by whenever he wanted, and as a retiree, he very often wanted to stop by. Well, at the time, the state I lived in required 24-hour notice for when a landlord or management company needed to notify you before they showed up at the residence. Also, in my lease, it specifically stated that any contact between the owner and myself needed to go through the management company. So, being tired of an old man hanging around my house, I called the management company to ask them to remind the owner that all communication from the landlord goes through them, and for them to tell him to give 24-hour notice before stopping by, as stated in the tenant's laws. He did not like this. I'll also say that in college towns, property management companies really wanted to know if you're renewing a lease within a few months of you moving out. They typically run on a similar schedule to semesters, as far as when people are moving in or out of their properties. I moved into this place in January, and they went as far as letting themselves into my house to leave a note asking me to let them know whether or not I was renewing my lease. Two weeks after I had moved in, as I had signed a six-month lease. Not sure why they couldn't just uh, send an email, mail the letter, or call me, but I think they learned their lesson about being pushy that day, as I was doing yoga in my underwear that morning. And the poor girl they sent over to deliver the renewal letter was probably traumatized for life after seeing my fat ass in a downward dog. Anyways, I liked the place enough to renew and signed a year-long lease renewal. About three months later, in March, I get a text from the owner saying that he heard I was interested in renewing my lease, but that his daughter had been accepted into the university, so he wanted her to stay there. This was confusing to me because A, he had gone through the management company to talk to me, and B, I had a lease contract already signed by the rental company and him. I called the management company to sort this out, and the conversation goes something like this. Me. So the owner of the property I'm living in contacted me to say that he isn't interested in leasing the property anymore. Company representative, CR. Oh yes, it looks like the property won't be available next year. Me. O okay, but I have a lease signed by both your company and the owner for next year. CR. Well, I'm sorry, but the owner no longer wants to lease the property out. We can help you find a new property in the area if you like. I had read the lease pretty closely at this point. I had the suspicion that the owner and this company thought I would just roll over because they said so. Unfortunately for them, I was about to come back with some malicious compliance to their own lease. Me. So, you're saying that the company is breaking the lease contract we have for next year? CR. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Nobody is talking about breaking any contracts with anybody. Me. That's what you just said. I have a lease for this place with your company, but the owner doesn't want to lease. We have a contract, but you're unable to fulfill the contract because the owner is backing out. CR. No, this is something you need to sort out with the owner because he's backing out of your lease. Me. By our current and renewal lease agreements, all contract between myself and the owner is required to go through your company. I already renewed the lease for next year with signatures from both your company and the owner. At this point, the disagreement is between you and the owner over whether he wants to back out of the lease we all signed. Good luck sorting it out. 
We went back and forth like this for a while, and eventually I got passed up the chain at the management company to one of the owners while I was waiting, likely because they were scrambling to come up with some way to convince me my compliance was a lost cause. I was reading my lease and noticed some vague wording having to do with the company being responsible for accommodations during periods when the property is unavailable or inaccessible. I spoke to the management property owner shortly after this. Management property owner, MCO. I know, property owner, personally, and there is no disagreement between us about this property being available. He wants his daughter to live there next year, so we're not renting it out. Me, that's your prerogative. But at this point, are you breaking our lease contract? MCO, no one is breaking the lease contract. Me, okay then. If you're saying you want to keep our contract, but the house will be inaccessible because the owner won't rent it out, then you're willing to put me up somewhere else for the duration of the lease for free. I pointed out in the lease where this statement was and the MCO hung up the phone. I am no lawyer, but the management company could have probably argued that wasn't the intention of the clause. Seemed to be more pointed at pest infestation, but was listed in a general section of the lease. I'm pretty sure they gave it up because I didn't hear from them about this after that conversation. They must have decided it wasn't worth the hassle from me and told the property owner that they had a signature on a contract they weren't going to break or honor under the circumstances of paying for me to live somewhere else free for a year. There were some half-hearted texts from the property owner after that threatening to evict me, but I did end up staying another year there. You want me to stay in the back room, even though it's almost 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. This just happened today. A little backstory. I work in a... <clears throat> particularly green craft and fabric store. Every Thursday, we receive a truck. Truck consists of unloading and organizing everything on the truck by hand, pushed down to us on a large roller ramp. The team I work with is wonderful. But the head manager of the store I'm at is a uh, piece of work. During truck days, she tends to just stand there and watch us all unload while yelling about how we're doing it all wrong. We are, in fact, following all the company's procedures, so not wrong. Another thing to note is that corporate controls our air conditioning. I live in Maine, so it's always between 70 to 100% humidity all the time, which makes it feel a lot worse than it is. Corporate still hasn't kicked on our air yet, despite it being almost July. Our back room was almost 100 degrees Fahrenheit. 97, but the thermostat is a bit hard to read. 100% humidity. I was unloading the truck with three other people, and my boss was standing there yelling as usual. I started to feel symptoms of heat exhaustion and asked my boss if I could quickly get a drink of water. She told me I couldn't until the truck was completely unloaded which was another half hour or so. She said something to me 30 seconds later, and I perfectly timed projectile vomited all over her. She started yelling at me and the rest of the team because we weren't helping her get cleaned up. To which they all responded along the lines of, well, you told her she couldn't go. You won't let me go get water, even though I'm having heat exhaustion? That's cool, I'll just puke on you instead. As per the lease, you owe late fees. Let's check that lease again. So this happened in college to me and my friends. We moved into a house from some small rental company based in the area after signing a year-long lease. House is great, no problems. But we were told a week or so after moving in, we would have to send our rent checks each month by the 5th by mail to the new office in the town 120 miles over. Whatever, barely a problem, so we just go with it. So for the next six months or so, we both mail our rent checks at the same time by the first of each month, and never had any problems. Then one day, my friend received a call from the landlord, saying we owe 100 plus dollars each in late fees, because two months our rent checks came in by the mail a day after they were due. They were definitely postmarked at least three days before that, but that's not the point. So he says, Per the lease, you each owe $50 for each month that is late. 
So that is $200 total. And we said, well, it was definitely postmarked multiple days in advance. And it's not our fault the USPS didn't deliver it on time. And that we had no way to know that it wasn't delivered on time. So how would we be accountable for those fees? He responded with, go read the documents. Per the lease, your late fees are clearly stated. You have until next month to pay. Then he hung up. We pulled up our lease, and just as he asked us to do, we read it. He was right. Based on all we knew, we each owed them 100 bucks. Damn. But in a section regarding payment, clearly states we were to hand deliver our rent checks to their office, which was still addressed to their old office in town. And the address we were supposed to deliver them to was not the one they had us sending our checks to. So we called them back. We looked at the lease, and per the lease, we are not required to send checks to that office, but to this office, insert old office address. So we will be bringing our checks there from now on, and we will not be paying any late fees, because we technically never agreed in the lease to mail our checks. The landlord flipped, saying we are being children, that this was unfair, and that he was going to get our parents on the phone. He literally said that, despite the fact both our parents were obviously on our side, and we were 20-ish year old people. We just said, well, if you want your rent money, we will bring it to the location described in our signed lease, since as per the lease, you need it delivered there, and we don't feel comfortable mailing them to unknown locations. Inevitably, he buckled. He knew he was at fault and dropped the late fees and said we wouldn't owe any more late fees ever so long as the envelope was postmarked on the right day. Every month after that, we waited until the day before to mail them out, ensuring they wouldn't receive their money until at least a couple days after it was due. We stayed in the house the next year. Aside from this incident, they weren't too bad compared to some other college town landlords and they changed the lease so it couldn't happen again. Felt good. Alrighty guys, put a bow tie on it because we're going to wrap that video up. Also got a few people wondering where my face is gone. I promise you the camera is coming back. It's just taking a little bit of time to set up the whole office space, trying to build a divider from scratch, and I won't get into it. Just know it is coming back hopefully in the next few weeks. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, consider subscribing. And if you really, really liked it, maybe give it a thumbs up and a share. Anyways, I'll see you in the next one. Peace out. And the poor girl they sent over to deliver the renewal letter was probably traumatized for life after seeing my fat ass in a town. What? <laughs>